So the return on our investment, um, I know what I'd like it to be, but realistically, it could be as quick as um, 10 to 12 months. It really could be that quick. And I hope it is because I'll start, <laughs> I'll buy more machinery. Well, it's, it started off over the last two years, it becomes harder and harder to get quality labor. So that's when I started looking at what machinery is out there. To, uh, to take away man hours. So originally, I just have my heart set on just a shop blaster, just to, to have the ability to clean in-house. When you've only got the, the room for one machine, that's why I decided to go with the Copa, because obviously it's holes, it's cutting, layout marking. The speed which it's notching is incredible. Hands down, it wipes the floor with, with a drill line. You couldn't physically pick up a, a, a tape measure, a piece of chalk in a square. By the time you've even marked it, it's cut it off. I was going to buy a blaster from one company and a copa from another company. And I was going to have one, you know, one this side and one that side. And it was going to be me that physically moved the steel. We got involved with Joe at Cutmasters and Joe just said, you're, bon <laughs> you're bonkers. Let me come and see you and explain to you how automated we can get this. And well, you go out there now and there's no, there's no, there's not a person moving it. Everything's automated. The cross travels are automated. Literally, we can uh, run both machines, load and unload, and start the steel with two people. We blast after we cut. We've seen a lot of facilities that blast pre-cut and it works both ways. We wanted to take as much work out of the fabrication side of it as possible. We get steel in, we put it through the copper, it's cut to length, all the holes are drilled, everything's done on it that it can possibly do. It'll go about through the blaster, come out clean. There's no slag, there's very minimal chipping off uh, because it's all been blasted off. Uh, so it goes to the fabricator, ready to weld up, ready to plate and weld up. Uh, and again, it's a time-saving thing. You don't want to be paying your top-skilled men to stand around with a, with a chipping iron, taking slag off. It's just making you know, end -to, our end-to-end -end process so much quicker. And um, I think the fabricators were a little bit worried to start off with. As soon as you mention robots or robotics and you know they obviously think that they're, they're going to lose their overtime but yeah, it hasn't been the case here we you know we're just we're just producing even more so that if, if anything they've got more overtime which <clears throat> so everybody's a winner we're, we're making money they're, they're making money so it's, it's a win-win for everybody load the machine up the nesting is created sent to the machine the operators have the easy job of pressing a button and, and away it goes. Select the bar that you want, tap on the space bar and it illuminates it yellow, and then the drag dog come along and select your bar, all good to go. Yeah, they get up every morning, they're happy to go to work because their lives are made so much easier by the integration of automated equipment. Don't get me wrong, I'd love a, to train uh, young guys to, to fabricate and that, but if, if the want isn't there, um, we have to go down different avenues. and. Yeah, like I said to, to Ian, uh, not once has the Vortman asked me to stop and go to the toilet or have a cup of coffee. It just keeps working. In a 10 hour shift, we'd be probably at around 40 tonnes a day. Our plans are, you know, we start in a month's time, we run 16 hours a day. Um, and let's, let's see where that journey takes us. It's, uh, it, I think it's going to be a, a shot for everybody me included, just how much work we're going to get through. Already, and we're only still learning the machinery, we probably reduced our man hours by about per, per ton, I would say on average between sort of 25 and 30 percent. I'm sure every fabricator in the country is saying how hard it is to get labour or quality labour. It's, um, it's the only way forward and you know when you go over to the Vortman factory and you see the robotic fabricators, it's incredible what, what they can do. That will be the way everybody, everybody goes. You're always going to need people, for sure, but there's a degree of work that can be just absolutely eaten by, um, by robots, and uh, that's, a, that's a journey we hope to be on within the next sort of five years. So.